Many Indian Muslim women have become successful for their extraordinary achievements in various walks of life. But most Muslim women continue to live an abysmal life. Women's representation in politics over the last 25 years have doubled in the world. But in India, we do not have even a single Muslim woman in the parliament. Their condition is worse when it comes to getting equal opportunities for growth. Any community cannot progress until it has adequate representation of women. Welcome to The Matrix. I have a highly distinguished Muslim lady in my studios as our guest today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Shazia Elmi, a journalist turned politician. Welcome Shazia. Today, we will talk to her about the state of Muslim women in India and understand what could be done to improve their situation. Education and economic empowerment have improved the living standards of women living in cities, but largely Muslim women have been one of the most neglected sections in our society. In rural India, they lead a miserable life and tend to accept it as their fate. They live under tremendous pressure of misplaced religious notions and their place in the traditional society. Let us straight dive into the discussion. Let me begin by asking you, Shazia, what do you make of Tabassum Sheikh case study? Uh, popularly known as Hijab Girl has now topped uh, Karnataka PUC exams. When asked by journalists that what does she have to say about the performance, she said that she was very proud of her achievements, but she regrets that uh, she could have, uh, she could not give her exams wearing a hijab. What is your take on this? I think overall the idea of, of Quran Sharif, hmm. Ikra, read, learn, that idea has prevailed. Because nowhere does it say hijab over kitab. Kitab remains most important. And I think that's the biggest takeaway for the Muslim community. Hmm. When you look at this young girl and her achievements, hmm. she writes, she says, do I regret not being able to wear the hijab? But I'm glad I made the choice. And my choice was kitab over hijab. And because the, if you read the, read the verse in, in the Quran Sharif, you will realize that Ikra, read, learn, pursuit of knowledge is so important. But because everything, everywhere is politicized to such a degree that even the teachings of Quran have been selectively used mm. to work against um, the idea of education. So if there's a choice, it's education all the way. Why would you choose hijab over kitab as some political leaders wanted is beyond me because we all know that religion itself and Islam is one of the first religion actually to have given the right to property to Muslim, to Muslim women, the, the right of choice when before the nikah is done. So it is one of those religions which is being made out to be misogynistic, which is not so. And hijab is not mandatory to to uh, to the society for the women to wear this foisted farman you know on the head this head scarf is 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 a matter of choice right it it should be best left to the girl or woman to decide what she wants to do isn't it um yes and no hmm. i you know i come from a family i'm from kanpur chamanganj which is a hardcore muslim neighborhood and um, it's as conservative as conservative can be. And I grew up with Ammi, my Khalas, my Muanis, my Chachis, and every other lady who was from the religion, from the faith, wearing a burqa. Everybody around me. I mean, this is what I only saw women without um, uh, the burqa, like proper burqa, not even hijab. Um, only when I was in the house, in their houses. Everywhere they were in hijab all the time. So I don't think it's a matter of great choice also for a 13-year-old or a 14-year-old because there is such um, the impact of taking up against a society where the conditioning is the good girls wear hijab. You're eligible to get married into a good family or you're from the good khandan or a good family if you're kept um, cloistered, hmm. secluded, sequestered. In a, in a burqa, so to speak. So yes, I have fought against that in just one generation. And it was very difficult 
and I feel very bad. Ammi could not do anything about it. You know, Ammi would wear a, a, wear a burqa. It used to be so hot. She would come to pick me up. Hmm. And I said, Ammi, everybody looks at me. You come to, you wear a burqa. Some people look at me. I feel, why do you wear it now? No one else's mom wear, wears burqa. She says, well, you're the one of the, I was one of the only Muslims in hmm. the school. And she says, beta, I can't help it. This is, so I don't think my mother had a choice. Yeah, she had to go back to their locality, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So you just, you don't have a choice. So I don't know whether it's a matter of choice. But look at, if it's a matter of choice, look at women of Iran. Hmm. They're choosing not to wear. Sure. Would that right be respected too? So somewhere there's a lot of confusion. People want to hold on to the religious identity. Hmm. And they say, oh, it's great. But I don't think a symbol, a hijab can be a symbol of your identity um, based on religious lines only because uh, 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 it's of, of politics. Hmm. I think it's, it's, it's really sad. I think women and men should read the Quran and realize that is, is burqa or hijab an ab enabler hmm. or a disabler? Right. Uh, okay, so my next question to you, Shazia, would be that in India, uh, Muslim women, Muslim girls face a lot of challenges in pursuing their education. Uh, especially the higher education. How do you think we can change this? How how can we make con conditions conducive so that uh, they don't have any issues going in for higher education? So first of all, I would like to say that the dropout rate of Muslim girls has fallen. When I talk about the dropout rate of Muslim girls in India, I'm looking at the primary level education and secondary level. So it's come down from 70% to 40%. And why has that happened? Mm. It has happened because when the welfare schemes of the of the center reach out for genuine empowerment and access of the girl child to schools mm. so I, I think it goes a long long way and i think that's what's happened the access to a toilet tiffin yes and safety has made all the difference mm. so it's not that uh, Muslim girls uh, did not want to go or mm -hmm. their parents were not keen. Mm -hmm. It's just that they felt there was, how would they make it? Mm -hmm. Is there transport? Uh, is there a toilet? So which is where secondary, at the secondary level, mm -hmm. lot the, the dropout rate of Muslim girls was much more. Mm -hmm. So our prime minister, and I want to talk about this government, commitment to the cause of Taleem, sure. Ikra, I keep going back to it, is so profound. That, and it's not based on a religion alone that automatically everybody benefits. Mostly, hmm. the most backward, the real minority within the minority, the Muslim girl child, right. the, the, the Muslim girl hmm. who has faced apathy from everybody, she is being celebrated. She is being asked to come out and study hmm. at any cost, hmm. which is why the allocation of scholarships for the minority students, particularly the girls, is way higher in this government than ever before. But nobody would talk about it, you see, because people are so busy politicizing um, everything hmm. that they rather, those who speak for the Muslims, claim to be secularists, hmm. would much rather that Muslim girls don't actually benefit. Hmm. Because as long as they can keep abusing Prime Minister Modi, BJP, I think it's a matter of politics for them. Mm. They don't really care. Mm. If they cared, they would be happy and they would applaud right. um, the, the, this party for what it's doing. So are you trying to say that the schemes which have been <clears throat> you know, undertaken by the present government are being undermined by such people who are trying to the data, down? The data and the figures is for everybody to see. Mm. And if there's a dropout rate... Um, uh, which we used to be 70%, if it's come down to 40%, hmm. that means that 30% more girls are actually going hmm. and, act, and have access to education. Hmm. And you can you have to look at the figures because that is the reality. Right. One is hmm. words and one is facts. Who do you choose? Hmm. Would you listen to a slogan given by an OVC or um, Akhilesh Yadav or Arvind Kejriwal or uh, Rahul Gandhi? Hmm or uh, Tejasvi now, hmm. and all those who run after the Muslim votes? Hmm. Or would you rather hear it for the girls themselves, who are too young perhaps even to vote, hmm. but who have access yeah. to no, education? But, but this is government, you see, this is a government scheme. So Shazia, how do we uh, bring about awareness about these schemes that, you know, that 
that the awareness is so overpowering, you know, and it is so, uh, you know, it reaches out to people and they take benefit out of it rather than being, you know, discouraged by, uh, you know, the, the powers that may be. I really would like to make an appeal, uh, Atir, through your, through Awaz and through the Matrix. Sure. My appeal is to all those who have a stake in the matter. It can be anybody. It can be educationist. It's it's as ham mazhab, fellow fellow Muslims. That some things, when it comes to reform within mm -hmm. any religion, and if you think that it, the reform must come from within, mm. then you must depoliticize some issues, mm. right from the Shabano case mm -hmm. to now the matter of hijab. Everything has become a matter of politics, and I think sometimes it has to be a matter of the constitution, mm. Quran itself. And just, um, just goodness, mm. uh, and a recognition of the fact that there has to be gender equity. Mm. Yeah. So taking a cue from here, you know, I'd like to ask you that within our society also, you know, how do we bring about a transformation so that there's a conscious uh, effort to empower women, you know, to make them feel uh, that they're equal partners, uh, um, they also have equal stake in the growth story. So well, nobody's saying here that uh, it's only the Muslim girls who are disenfranchised mm. and uh, other Hindu uh, and the Sikh sisters are not. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of levels and it's a matter of the, 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 the religious stamp that is there. And of course, a matter of uh, cultural consciousness too, mm -hmm. uh, depending on areas. But I feel when, uh, when, when you take out the politics of it mm -hmm. and this complete belligerence about we will do as we want, because only because we want to be different. And this happens because of politics mm. and politicization of a religion. Right. So it's not to do with Islam, mm. but Islamization. Oh, okay. It's not to do with Islam, mm. but Islamism. Mm. So I'm, I would rather talk about Islam mm. and the constitution mm. than Islamization. Mm. I would like to take that position. Right. Because anything that makes my younger sisters right. and my... Uh, my um, senior hmm. sisters um, have a better life is something I would like to work towards. Right. Having been, having grown up in, in, in Kanpur, in Chamanganj, and having, having seen this for myself, how so many women are just abandoned hmm. and uh, discarded hmm. and some of, across the ages, it, it hurts me. I, I, I look at uh, Zubeda Khala. I mean, there's so many names that come to my mind. The pictures mm. of them begging for arms, coming home, baby baji, and it hurts me. Mm. So I want to go there and say something about them. Yes. I don't know why I should be opposed only because I'm in the BGP. Mm. I think it's very unfair. Mm. I asked the Maulanas who oppose me and who have an issue with me that uh, I said, please look at my voice of reason. Please see the, the what I say vis-a-vis through the prism of Quran as, as well. Mm. Why does it have to be through the prism of, of politics? And they have no answer. Mm. And then I ask them, is there any verse in Quran that says that if you're a part of the BGP, you're not a good Muslim? And then they scoff and laugh and they say, oh, you're playing, you're being too clever by half. And I said, but you, so are you. Mm. You're being too clever by half by disregarding everything I'm saying mm. uh, only because I'm a Muslim in the BGP. And there are reasons. I'm not saying this because I'm a spokesperson in the BJP. The reason I'm here is because I've been through all of that. Mm. So what do you think is the effect is actually the cause? I'm saying this and I'm here because I've undergone and endured something. I've seen life a certain way. Mm. So I totally look at my friends with the so-called liberals who I don't find liberal at all. And uh, who, of course, their job, job is just to hate uh, one party to tell them that please see it from a girl's point of view. Then they ask me, why don't you talk about Hinduism? Why don't you talk about Sikh women and their rights? And I tell them, because this is my reality. Had I been, maybe if I was born in a house where there was Ghungat, I would speak against that too. But this is a reality as I have known it. Sure. And this is the only party, if you see what happened on the case of Triple Talaq. Mm. Please take out, um, uh, and I would ask, like all my friends to who are watching the show, just to Google it and to find out as to what is the stance of every party. Congress party walked out. Look at Ahmadi party, it was against it. OAC, of course, felt there was no need for it. And what was the, the triple talaq and banning of, of it as a practice? 
which is pernicious to the spirit of 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 Islam hmm. is considered pernicious and not just that it's not even practiced in most of the muslim countries including bangladesh and pakistan yes tunisia algeria morocco we want to hold on to something that is one not respectful of quran hmm. and not part of the quran which is also not practiced in muslim countries but you want to keep it going why because you must suppose the bjp it's like you want to cut your nose to spite your face sure. why would you want to do that to yourself yes. or to your sisters it's unfair very interesting take uh, you know the, your point of view on islamization and uh, you know the constitution and islam and constitution so very interesting uh, take and since we wear keep wearing up blinkers in our society that the government has to intervene and do something good for the society Uh, but tell me, uh, um, do you have fond memories of Kanpur? When when did you go back to Kanpur last? Um, so I I lost Amir, uh, my mother, last year, and I I went there, and it always does a lot to me. I mean, that's my uh, yes. Janbhumi, yes, my birthplace, and uh, all that the ideological battleground that I find myself on right now. Right. Every day I go there as a warrior. Mm. I think the makings of it. the stirrings of consciousness mm-hmm. it all began as a child in in that household right in kanpur in that little um closed ghettoized area mm. called chamanganj i yeah. had a urdu newspaper there mm. and it was you know it was yeah i mean i would dream actually i would pray and my i would pray and i would tell uh, my my dua was because all that i would dream of was so <laughs> out there compared to my situation here so my mind is like going all over the place i'm a little girl mm-hmm. and i would say allah ja to mere halaat badal do ja to mere khwab badal do khwab kahin aur hain halaat kuch aur hai kuch aisa kar do ki bas khwab match ho jaye halaat se ja halaat match ho jaye khwab se it was my i would think like this and i was like a, there was anger in me mm-hmm. i said i'm so good in studies and i, I love studies mm-hmm. and i said why why should i be the one wanting to serve and cook man i'm good in studies ab i can't be served hmm. but kyun agar mera bhai hum log school se laut ke aayenge to bhai main hi agar koi kosar khala aayenge to main hi chai banaun wo kyun nahi bana sakta mera to exam hai kal aur wo to mujhe to mujhe kyun bheja ja raha hai but i just understood that you have to be this way yeah. so i was i've been challenging these stereotypes since i was a little girl and yeah i was a very slappable kid <laughs> <laughs> and kanpur of course is a very vibrant city you know you have Very Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you know, Abba was a Maulana hmm. from Deoband. Yeah, he was from Deoband. Deoband. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. From Deoband, Maulana is half kill me. Hmm. We have the old Urdu newspaper, hmm. and I'm the youngest daughter, hmm. and big family, and so it was really tough to navigate my way. Right. But I could see things for what they are, and I said no. It, it, whatever I get into, first I was in. Um, you were colleagues, in fact, in a yes. in a very well-known news channel. Of course, we go a long way. <laughs> you go a long way, and I was an anchor there. But you know, my journey began with becoming a reporter. I went to Jamia Mass Communication. It was about self-expression. They have to say something, and I must speak for that little fourteen, fifteen-year-old Shazia who felt helpless. Mm. She wanted to say, and I'm sure there's so many Shaz little mm. girls out there. Mm. they want to say they want to do they want to get out there and express themselves yeah and they don't have a choice mm. some of them might want to wear hijab some of them might not want to sure so if they want want to just show the beautiful hair and they want to feel the hair under the sunlight mm. or the clouds or let it flow with the breeze but they'll never have a chance because they've been told good girls wear hijab so i just want to speak for them you know athir is just my it's just who i am and i think that little god shazia is somebody i have to look after in the process i end up doing a lot of things tv activism and now politics but i think deep down mera jo maqsad hai jo mera meri jo khwahish hai wo kaash main us bachche ka khayal rakh pati hmm. us time nahi rakh payi lekin meri jaisi bahut sari bachchiyan hain jo bahut pareshan haal hain yeah but seek a better life i'm sure you'll be inspiring uh, you know a lot many shazias out there no isn't yeah, it a whole lot of them yeah. i'm sure so now and they come to me yeah i think you know it's so funny whenever i go uh, if i take a flight or i'm in a train or i go for shadis you know those kabhi kabhar hamare yahan hota hai na mardana zanana but anyway i go i meet everybody you know 
it is so nice the young men hmm. and their sisters hmm. and their mothers and hmm. i go you know very to when i go to apna jama masjid or kanpur mein hmm. all the girls come to me and they take his own selfies from me and their mothers tell me beta bahut acche kar rahe ho acha hum log bol nahi sakte kuch dekhe hum tumhare saath hai it's so much affection i mean it's an emotion yeah i can feel it it's just a thing because it's coming from a very pure place sure it's not coming from an agenda right and i think people out there get it that this is what shazia is about hmm. more more than anything it's about truth of her own life that she must be right for the sake of more joy for others hmm. and hmm. i think that is my purpose absolutely and, and you must be proud of the d- decisions you have taken which have brought you thus far and you are now inspiring people and you've changed people's mindsets no they yes. come to you and like you saying boys yes. young men they come young men uh, i'm i mean i, I cannot you. Hmm. you know people say that oh muslims don't like the bjp but i cannot tell you how many men young fathers and um, grandmothers daughters uh, and they, and and so many women they just flock to me and they just say uh, what do we do about this what hmm. can i do men say that they also stuck lot of you know lot of fathers tell me that they feel very bad about their daughters yeah. and they say that i'm glad you're taking it up we can't say it yes but we have to you know yesterday a girl came to me she's a um she she does makeup she's a stylist of mm-hmm. sorts and she said she met me somewhere and she says she lives in silampur mm-hmm. and she says when she gets out she has to cover herself but she says um, i i get odd jobs doing makeup for others doing hair can you recommend she just met me it was just so arbitrary mm. i was just out yeah at a local market and she said i recognize you i'm i've come to do some makeup for somebody shazi baji can you help me i was like so proud of her mm. she's an 18 year old girl yeah. i think 18 or 19 yeah. she says i want to start working mm. i want i don't want to just get married and my father supports me mm. but how do i get out mm. Mm. i'm just interning now but i want to go can you help me get a job and i will wear a burqa and i'll come out but this is what i do but i wrap it up and i think no she's not 18 she's 20 now but i just put i get out and then i and i get into the metro then i wrap it up quietly and i go but when i come back home my mother tells me do wear the burqa mm. because people will say terrible things about us mm. and i said i can relate to it Yes, uh, but tell me, Shazia, when such people approach you, you know, you have a big fan following. You know, we know that. Uh, how does it feel that you know you are at one level you're Shazia, and then also you're representing a political party? Uh, how does it feel when when you have such people approaching you? Is it a good feeling? How do you feel about it? I feel if you're a member of a party, hmm. if you're let's say a reporter, or whatever you do hmm. those are various vehicles to to say your thing to express yourself i find a lot of expression as um the protector of young shazia in the role that i am in hmm. be- only because of the access i have hmm. the the proximity you have sure with the let's say with the law making law makers of the country yes the policy makers it's huge hmm. so and as so also somebody in public life in front of the television cameras the advocacy you can do yes for the for your for your cause for reforms in the community mm-hmm. for uh, better equity right. for our muslim sisters hmm. i think is huge hmm. so i i wear that role with a lot of joy and responsibility wonderful. i love it wonderful now shazia i want to uh, take your attention towards another important issue you know which is uh which doing rounds which is that you know that uh, in india muslim women still face disparity in getting equal share of inherited property you know what happens is some some parents have also started taking recourse to the special marriages act you know because you know if they go by uh, uh the, strictly by the religious you know guidelines uh the girls won't be getting the equal share and it is assumed that since the girl is going to get married she will get share from her husband's property so they do not get equal share uh and clerics these days you know they are saying it as a conflict of religion when people are uh, taking recourse to the special marriage act to get parity for their children uh, oh, what is your take how do you see this so first of all i would like to say that 
I would again make an appeal to the clerics out there and to the mutawallis and uh, all the imams there who play important roles in waqf properties and settlement of issues and all of that. Um, that they should. I'm a politician. Let me be a politician. You all don't have to be. Mm. You follow your truth and Quran. In fact, Islam was the first religion that accorded right of property to Muslim women. Yes. But if you see the situation today, mm. even though they are haqdar or beneficiaries of half, um, half the half of what the 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 male or the brothers get, they're denied even that. Mm. And I think that is so unfair. So this is. So Quran is cited mm. absolutely wrongly mm. to justify uh, an uh, uh, a wrong practice, right. and I think Muslim girls mm. should ask for what is rightfully theirs. One, mm. and also there has to be more awareness about the fact that this conditioning that you know a, a, a decent woman is one or a girl is one who doesn't speak up. Mm. You see that adds to the pressure. Mm. On a girl, or a daughter, or a sister, or mm. a wife, mm. not to speak out. The whole culture of silence. Mm. That and this is why we keep throwing women back into the sequestered, cloistered spaces, mm. as they won't be able to speak up and speak for themselves. Right. And I think that must change. Mm. And I think the khutbas that we have all around, mm. we should put pressure on all the imams mm. that say the real thing. Mm. Why do you can change from becoming Muslim to Indian Muslim mm. <laughs> to um, BJP hater or All India Muslim Personal Law Board supporter. Mm. I mean, your your allegiance is to what? If you claim to be a man of faith, then be a man of faith. Why are you becoming a man of politics? I am not getting that, and I think there is a huge disconnect. And I think people, ordinary Muslims, mm. men and women, should ask the the. All those who sermonize, who actually do the khutbas, then how many of them are based on politics and religion as it ought to be? Hmm. Hmm. And also, also it's very clear that Quran must prevail. If there is a choice between Quran and Hadith, which is the interpretation of Quran, hmm. then Quran is absolutely a, a, is the higher word. Yes. So why would you quote the most regressive of all Hadiths hmm. to take away the rights? Of our Muslim sisters, sure, and then make it about religion. Mm. I think this is the worst kind of misinterpretation of Quran mm. and Islam. Mm. And you know who suffers the biggest disservice is to Muslims, and I wish they realize that because the other side mm. picks on these statements mm. made by the most regressive Maulanas, uh, who will cite the mm. most regressive mm. versions of Islam. Mm. And yes. Quran, yes, and make it about religiosity when well, yes. it's, not. it's not. And who suffers? Hijab is a prime example of that. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, so now I'd like to ask you about uh, Pasmandas. You know, the BJP especially has given some statements. You know that they are going to reach out to them, uh, which is a good thing. But then again, you know, there are people. Who are critical of this? Why, you know, why, why just, why only Pasmandas? Why not others? Why, why is this so much special attention on them? But my point here is that the situation, the condition of Muslim Pasmanda women, it continues to be pitiable. Yeah. What could be done to improve their condition? Well, I think uh, first of all, I'm I'm glad that there is acknowledgement of the fact. Mm. That the Pasmandas, who are eighty percent of Indian Muslims, really need a scheme or a or a measure whereby there can be a genuine outreach. Hmm. Only unless and until you identify them as really a hakdar, a deserving bene deserving beneficiaries, hmm. can you actually make life better for them. So, firstly, recognition of the fact that the most deserving and the all those citizens who are the lowest rung mm. of the socio-economic ladder of progress mm. are are these uh, belonging to the minority within the larger minority that Muslims see themselves as? Mm. I don't, but I'm talking about the others. Mm. So why won't you reach out to these eighty percent who are really at the bottom most rung of the socio-economic 
um, indices in the ladder and reach out to them and do something for them. You know, in terms of access to taaleem and rozgar, I think it's very important and I'm very, I appreciate um, and acknowledge this of, of, of Modi ji who has started talking about it and has been part of a mission to reach out to them sure. because they have been left out. On the one hand, um, Muslims oppose caste-based reservations and they say they should be religion-based also. Hmm. But the actual caste within Islam hmm. in India, because outside of India, there is no caste system, as you know. But here, I mean, it, it just can't be about benefits to Sajjads, Sheikhs and Mughals hmm. and Pathans. You have to reach out to others sure. because they have again uh, in their respective communities been um, not had access to banks, microcredit, yojanas, uh, employ employment and employability, right. skilling hmm. and mostly education. Mm -hmm. So I think we must all and anybody who speaks for anybody who claims to be uh, concerned about the rights of minorities in India hmm. would really want to appreciate this about the Prime Minister hmm. and should quickly change sides and join the BJP because it really wants to reach out and do something to them. Right. Now, uh, one you know, kind of question which pertains to uh, the, polit the party you belong to, you know, the BJP. It has initiated several uh, measures, schemes and, uh, uh, you know, ways of improving situation of Muslim women in the society. Uh, but a large section of people among Muslim society see these measures with a pinch of salt. What do you have to say to this? I really would like to tell the naysayers that they should say no to this kind of politics and politicking. Mere hatred of a party based on your prejudices or whatever your experience has been or what others tell you is not good enough. You have to see the reality. You have to see the deep and profound commitment that a prime minister has, that the party has towards the welfare of her Muslim sisters, mm. towards the stance that has been taken after the Supreme Court judgment on Triple Talaq mm. and what it means for a society. Mm. That it's not enough to read an editorial and to hear from other political Muslims, mm. friends of yours, Oh, let's go for Samajwadi Party, let's go for Congress Party, let's go for RJD, let's go for AAP. Why? Because they abuse the Prime Minister and BJP. Let's see what are we getting from BJP. Are we getting a better life? Do our sisters and do we as sisters have a better life, more dignified, better access to education, employment? That is what's important. So say no to this absolutely cliched mm. form of politics. Politics of transformation, newness and authenticity must work. I think there was this cookie cutter model that worked in India since 1947 and of course after 1950, after the constitution was adopted. And it just became about these parties becoming the Rehnuma or the messiahs of, the, of Muslims. They see we have two, three Muslims and we care for you and RSS is evil and we will look after you. Muslims must tell the Congress party and Ahmadmi party and Samajwadi party and RJD and what have you, including OAC, that look, our constitution is there to look after ourselves. It gives us the, the mandate to be equals. Now, please tell us what are we doing about our education, our access to microcredit, our presence in the banks, our representation in jobs. What are you doing about that? It's not enough to be told, bhai, tu musalman ho, humko vote do. Muslims just protest against this whole talk of um, um, that they're members of a community. Yeah, we Muslims, ghar mein musalman hai, lekin hum bahar ja kar barabar ke hindustani hai, kisi se kam nahi hai. Ye jo heen bhaavna hai na, ye kam zarf bana lena apne ko, ya aisa se kam tari mein rehna, hum to victim hai, hum to victim hai, humara kya ho raha hai, dekho ye loog kya kar rahe hai, in se nikalna padega. बराबरी से अपना हक मांगना पड़ेगा तब आपको सारी असलियत पता चल जाएगी सब पार्टियों की देखिए बहुत हो गया नफरत करते करते भाजपा से आप इस नफरत से निकलिए अपने से मोहब्बत करना शुरू कीजिए वो बेहतर होगा इंटरेस्टिंग 
It has been 75 years since our country got its freedom. Unfortunately, Muslim women have been left behind in our nation's growth story. It is about time that we give them their rightful position and provide them with equal growth opportunities so that they may also fulfill their dreams and aspirations. Youth could be agents of change. They must strive to take a lead in this direction. Shazia, thank you for being with us. Despite your busy schedule, we'll be back soon with another interesting episode next week. Till then, goodbye from the Matrix team.